Hey guys. All right. Oh, hey guys, who am I? Hey y'all. <laughs> I literally said that and I was like, <laughs> that's not me. Anyways, hey y'all, I'm back. Part two, that looks like four, part two of <laughs> Science Simplified uh, Matador study, um, but the application. So I really wanted to go over the you know, application of diet breaks and like intermittent dieting as they kind of termed it, they didn't call it a diet break, um, but intermittent dieting um, versus continuous dieting and kind of what that means for you guys. Because okay, yeah, there's a school paper, there's a review paper on this, like what does that mean for us? So um, first and foremost, you have to be in a calorie deficit long enough and substantial enough to lose weight. There also have to be a lot of other factors in consideration. Um, hormone levels, sleep levels, stress levels, how is your training, how much muscle mass do you have, when is the last time you dieted? I mean, there's like a hundred factors in this, right? Um, but if we can make weight loss more effective um, and minimize as many adaptations as possible, which is really the goal of that whole line of research, then why don't we do it, right? So if you guys didn't watch part one, definitely go watch that because I think it does a really good job at outlining, well, <laughs> I think it did a pretty good job at taking notes and outlining the important stuff on the paper. I would definitely encourage you guys to read the paper um, for yourself, but I, you know, I took notes and I, that's what I basically talked about on there. Um, but essentially what they did was there was either 16 weeks of continuous dieting or there was um, still 16 weeks of dieting, but it was in two week blocks. So it'd be two weeks of dieting, two weeks of maintenance, two weeks dieting, two weeks maintenance. So it was 30 weeks total. We had the same amount of calorie restriction. And when they had these maintenance periods, they were true maintenance. So they, um, they were in the lab, so they were testing all the time so they could factor in their RAE and adjust it to their body comp changes, yada, yada. Um, so it was very on point. And they actually noted in the research that people during the maintenance periods did not gain or lose weight. It was really impressive that they actually maintained that well. So overall, props to them. They did an amazing job. <laughs> I hope they put out more research like that. Um, my only critique was that they didn't do any um, like psych evaluations, which I was just, I just find interesting. Um, or just questions in general, like not even like super hardcore, but just like a Likert scale, like how do you feel? Are you hungry or you, you know, whatever. Um, anyways, <laughs> so, you know, that presents the point, okay, well, should you diet for two weeks and then not diet for two weeks and then diet for two, like, so you have to think about what's practical for you um, and your situation. So I'll kind of outline a few situations. Um, first and foremost, say you are just dieting for the first time um, and you don't really know what to expect. Maybe you're doing it yourself, maybe you're doing it with a coach. Um, you don't necessarily have an end date, you just know like, hey, I wanna lose body fat. In that instance, I would say that going slower is going to be better. And if you have the time, like there's not a deadline, working diet breaks in can be very, very helpful. I honestly do not think that every two weeks is necessary. Um, and most people who are looking to lose weight, like if you actually need to lose weight in a, um, you know, like it for health reasons, I would say that you probably need to not do that. You probably have enough body fat that you don't need to do that. But clearly that paper showed me those people were obese, like they needed to lose body fat, you know what I mean? Um, it wasn't like they were just like, like lean people trying to get leaner. So that's just my argument and my perspective. Like, hey, you're trying to dive into this diet, dive into this deficit. Yes, work in diet breaks, work in longer refeeds, um, but is it necessary every two weeks? I don't believe so. Just from a practical perspective, um, the motivation of people to want to diet, um, you know, you like harness that, you know, harness changes. Like if you're, if you're, you know, like, if you're in a good groove for like losing weight, do you want to just kind of like stop? I don't know. I wouldn't. Um, but it's really interesting. I actually talked to Dr. Campbell about this and he's like, oh, he like set up his whole year based on diet breaks and he thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And I was like, this looks horrendous. Like I would never want to do this. Um, but that just could be like a guy versus girl thing. I'm not sure. Um, just a personality thing, but like don't catch me dieting for a few weeks and then off and then dieting. Like I would rather just do it in chunks, right? However, 
um, like I said, if you if they're if you're just dieting, there's no end date. Um, I do think it is very very valuable to add these in, and you can even work them in like, hey, every few weeks, like kind of open ended. So you might add this in, um, or it might be something that works in perfectly if somebody has, let's say, like a event or they're traveling or whatever, and they want to have more calories. Um, now again, when I say that, <laughs> you have to say it in a I think people really misunderstand when they hear the word diet break. They think that they just kind of get to eat whatever they want. And if we are going by exactly what the study did say, they were at true maintenance and gained zero weight. So that does not mean that you get to have a week off of dieting. It simply means you are no longer in a deficit. It still means that you're tracking your food, you're prepping your food, you're eating things on a certain time. Um, so it, like the maintenance to the deficit might not even be that many calories, you know? So it, I think the the one big problem, oh, diet break, oh, every few weeks I get to eat more food. Yes, it's probably like this much more food, which is amazing, and that can possibly help with adaptations, but don't just hear diet break and think that you're completely taking a break from your diet and your regimented schedule. So that's just something to keep into consideration, which I think a lot of people, if they don't really read into that, might miss, just because the name diet break, so also they didn't say the word diet break, that's what like the physique community is kind of popularized it as um and that's the second group i want to talk about so say you are a physique athlete right and you do have an end date you do have a show in mind um you can do one of two things one you can build out your prep with hypothetical diet breaks worked in there um and you can say hey we're gonna diet for the next 24 weeks and we're probably gonna sandwich in two diet breaks here that might work um and then if it doesn't work and then you don't do it, but you've planned enough time. Um, and then also you could just say in general, hey, we're gonna take this amount of time. If we get a diet break, we do. If we don't, we don't. Um, I know for myself as a coach, I do add this into people's plans sometimes, not always. And it's, it's not something that I typically plan out ahead of time, simply from the fact that people literally respond differently every time you diet them. Um, and if we're ready, and a lot of times I don't even always do diet breaks, I might do like extra refeeds. So instead of like one refeed, I might do two or three or four in a row um, instead of a full week. But sometimes they do get a full week at maintenance, um, hypothetical maintenance, because I'm not testing everything like they were in the lab. Um, it just really depends, honestly. So I would say that they are an extremely valuable tool for um, physique athletes but only if you have enough time. You don't want to do a diet break and then not be ready and you're like, man, I really wish I would have had that week. In all honesty, what it usually comes down to is you didn't start dieting early enough <laughs> um, or just a lot of shit started happening um, and your body just was not responding as you thought it would. So I do think they are very valuable for competitors. I do think though that you have to be very realistic with them um, and you know, instead be like, hey, you know, people ask, oh, can I do this? Can it might happen, it might not. And it, it's, it's this weird, like intuitive feeling I always have as a coach, like, hey, you're gonna respond really well to this. Um, but like I said, a lot of times what you can do is you can just see how somebody responds maybe to like two or three refeeds in a row, maybe even four. And then if they do like awesome with their losing weight, then okay, let's push it for a full week. Um, so I do think that for really any situation, you can add them in, but as a physique athlete with an end deadline, I do think you need to be a little more careful when you put them in, Versus if you are just a lifestyle client and you're just dieting, you might be able to do them more frequently just based on the fact that there's not an exact end date. I hope this was super helpful for you guys. I know this is a kind of a hot topic and people are always trying to figure out, you know, different dieting hacks on how to optimize everything, you know what I mean? Uh, and how do I get the most out of what I'm doing currently? So uh, I do think that diet breaks are an amazing tool for both competitors and lifestyle clients, uh, you just have to use them appropriately. So I will link again the text below um, to the papers in case you guys didn't um, catch it last time and definitely watch the first video to kind of learn about all the science behind it um, and stay tuned for more of these. I have another one in the works. So thank you guys so much um, for tuning in. I appreciate it and hope you learned a lot.